Robocraft 2 has made the biggest mistake in gaming history. Everyone misses every bit of old school Robocraft since its inception, but the fact of life is that Free Jam cannot replace its viral success, and that is due to one reason, which we will talk about in this video. What is up guys, this is Space Kryptonite here to break it down like no other. You see, I am a Robocraft fanboy, and when I say fanboy, I was a part of the hype for the epic nuke crate, even for as bad of an idea as it was. Throughout all their development shenanigans, false promises... Perhaps my biggest regret, and I think our biggest regret, is maybe that if we went back we would listen more to the dedicated players listen more to the dedicated players and trend chasing i've spent the majority of my youtube channel centered around archiving the legacy of the robocraft community I've showcased bot designs, featured new updates, and yet, Robocraft 2 has already plateaued before I could even make a comeback. <laughs> oh boy. If you haven't heard, Robocraft 2 released as of November of 2023 with some astounding, mostly negative Steam reviews. Before I can explain to you why everyone isn't vibing with Robocraft 2, we need to actually play the game because I actually haven't played... So I'll, I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. As with most free-to-play games, there are two sides to the coin. One side being the goal is to bring joy with roses and sunshines along with a chef's kiss. But on the other side being that the game cannot live without your money. Spending money on a game that brings all sorts of fun and joy or even the potential of what it could be is a valid reason to continue supporting that game. However, when there is no fun or excitement, there is no motivation to spend money. Upon starting the game, I saw the montage and was like, yes, this is what I should expect. Things are going to be kind of exciting. Then came the first message, which was how Robocraft 2 is an early access title and talks about all the crazy potential this game has. Then came the ad for Season 1 Battle Pass, which has no call to action, but the amount of stuff I'm reading is all gibberish to me, because I have no idea what is even in the game, yet alone why the g Ra Warriors decided to wake up from their everlasting slumber to join the war on Mars. Finally, we make it to the main menu with all the crucial elements for functioning this wild beast. With Kray standing there all majestic, I have a platform with no bot and I am left with two choices, build or play. Sounds good, I hit the play button and to my surprise I waited and waited and waited. But to no avail, my experience was tragic, I could not play the game. I decided to leave the game to find out how many players were actually playing the game, and to my surprise, the average was extremely low, ranging between 70 to 80 players when I compared it to my own game, One Bit Adventure, which by the way, is also free to play, but single player, which you should totally download right now if you love RBG Rogue likes. It hovers around 40 players on Steam and has gradual growth. Robocraft is a well-known brand because of its viral story of five guys making a build em up shooter before it was even a phrase. It was only released a few months ago, so why did everyone move on from this game so quickly? I read the Steam reviews and sure enough the results were as expected. For some reason, it feels like the first game, only worse. Look how they massacred my boy. No passion? I miss the old Robocraft. I wish we could go back. Go to college, get a degree in math and physics, and build a Robocraft bot. Easy anti-cheat still ruins your game and causes you to lose all your build progress. Keeping in mind, other popular game titles do use easy anti-cheat it's not a bad software Elden Ring Fall Guys Apex Legends this isn't an excuse that you can just toss around especially because Robocraft 1 had the same very issue this is only a few of what has been already been told by reviewers and yet the answers from free jams are still the same we are right and you are wrong 
Back to the game, I literally can't play a match without assembling the Avengers on Discord, and while recruiting allies might be easy for me to do, new players should not be expected to do this to play a game. The UI is very plain black and white with the functionality of buttons not actually being buttons. I kid you not. I was like, how do you think this is okay? The UI is also frustrating to navigate and is probably recommended not to play on ultra widescreen mode because yeah, you're gonna be swinging your mouse left and right all across that screen. As far as building goes, prepare yourself for a YouTube tutorial. Bring your notebook and paper because essentially you are going to be watching YouTube tutorials just to build a bot. And so I decided to, you know, actually look for YouTube tutorials and up came Lathrix. Let's see what he has to say. I was messing around with this a little bit earlier and honestly, it's a lot to take in in comparison to the original game. You can now scale your designs, the weapons and everything else act very differently. You can set up your wheels in different ways. It's a bit more involved than the old systems, let's say. Yep, here it comes, and oh, almost toppled, but not quite. Oh, wow, yeah, full speed, this whole thing just slides. I am now a roadblock, you're all welcome. A lot less snappy than in Robocraft 1 in terms of the controls. The amount of effort to help the player understand what to do isn't there. You have a jumbled mess of features bunched and crammed into the screen that doesn't give you much time to digest and breathe. Take the battle matrix for an example, which is essentially the tech tree, but can you feel what I am feeling just staring at the screen? Where do you even begin? A lot of things are not thoroughly explained, and it feels as though they are relying on you to figure out what in the world did they create. Robecraft 2 only features one game mode simply to reduce queue times, but somehow that game mode continues to bring more questions the longer I look around. It was shocking to see how the innovation that was promised failed to deliver. And out of all the modes they chose, it was Battle Arena. You can now exit and enter your bot. You have a weapon to shoot things. Protonium crystals spin around, making it more difficult to capture. This brings me back to the circle of life between hardcore and casual players. Who is this game for? Why do I get stuck on little hills constantly? If this game is competitive, where are the ranks? There are no AI bots to even battle against to test your damage output. There is no custom game modes to even mess around with. Nothing is explained as far as how to even play the game. And the biggest mistake was one, that there was from the beginning. Guinea. Free Jam spent the majority of their time with a bucket list of unfulfilled promises that never came to light while always working on moving from the product that you really want. Take Robocraft 2's roadmap, which proclaims in March of 2023 that they were working on procedural tank tracks, which is quite interesting. However, even after a year of posting the roadmap declaring it as in development, it has yet to release. Another feature that is tossed in and out of the pool of development has been the feature of undo, which appears then disappears to whatever month they feel like posting. How is also friends list and party not a priority with a multiplayer game where the only game mode requires cooperation to win a match? These are features that were posted to show us that they are working hard towards a goal. They are providing false hope by not following through on their roadmap. Robocraft has always been a Lego battle bot building dream, but with its own fundamentals from a famous model, build, drive, and fight. The legacy of the model holds true even to this day, and without it, a Robocraft game is not a Robocraft game without it. The simplicity of its original form created an open platform for all ages and types of players. Robocraft 2 fails not because of gameplay balance or playing UI design, but the barrier to entry to fully understanding the game. You can't build a bot without feeling overwhelmed with the options that you have, let alone miss the simplicity of Robocraft 1. You can't drive because every hill is a challenge, and you can't fight because the community has already moved on to other games. What should have been a sequel with many features became a sequel that lacks the basics in what it takes to make a fun game. 